Ekabowski. Mary Jean joined the library system in 1992. She was appointed director uh, in 2011. In her previous roles, she served as the chief operating officer, human resources officer, central library department head, and librarian. Mary is an active member of a number of library organizations, including the Western New York Library Resource Council, uh, New York State Public Library Systems Directors Organization, the New York State Association of Library Systems, and the New York Library Association. She sits on several Census 2020 Complete Count Committees as well. Annually, Mary Jean has been recognized by Buffalo Business First as one of the region's 200 most powerful people. Now, let's welcome Mary Jean. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm going to ask you to bear with me while I share um, my screen because I do have a bit of a PowerPoint presentation. So let me go ahead and get started with that. Okay, well, here we are today on this beautiful afternoon in Buffalo, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about what's been going on with your Buffalo and Erie County Public Libraries. So like other businesses, the 37 Buffalo and Erie County Public Libraries have gone through an unprecedented shakeup during the novel coronavirus. Starting on March 17th, our libraries were closed for approximately three months. New health and safety requirements forced us to look at the way we had done things for nearly 100 years. While libraries may look a little different, we remain strongly committed to fulfilling our mission, connecting our diverse community with library resources that enrich, enlighten, and entertain. We are also committed to and very mindful of the wellness and safety of everyone, our patrons, our staff, and our vendors. Now, it's very important for me to tell you that right now, all 37 of our libraries are open, and we are happy to be serving our communities again. But there are many new protocols that we have had to put into place including things such as protocols for increased cleaning and disinfecting surfaces, the wearing of face coverings, which are required for all those entering ages two and over, social distancing is most certainly in effect, and in our city branches and at the central library, we've gone so far as to removing some tables and chairs so that our public computers may be spaced out hand sanitizer and tissues are also available for use. We've indicated with six foot marking distances on the floor in our very heavy traffic areas for everyone's safety. And we are so very grateful for everyone abiding by these new rules. Recently, we increased our operating hours at the Central Library and in our Buffalo branches. And I'm extremely proud of our staff and their ability to provide these services to Erie County. Our city branches in particular are open and focused on access for students trying to get their schoolwork done and for assisting residents in the 2020 census completion. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later on. Today, we also have other things that are currently uh, in place for our at each one of our libraries. In fact, if you've been borrowing materials, physical materials, you may be aware that there is a 96 hour or four day quarantine on all books. These are when the books are returned. And this is based on a new science-based study called the Realm Project, which stands for Reopening Archives, Libraries, and Museums. Now this study is a, is a standard in our industry and it is sponsored by OCLC, which is the Online Computer Library Center, 
IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, and Battelle, who was a leader in the medical science and technology field. Now, when books are returned, we do keep them on the borrower's record during this quarantine period. And I must express something that we've taken very seriously is that no overdue fines are acquired on materials if they are returned on time during this quarantine for this quarantine period. Daily, our staff must also take certain measures before even entering our building. They complete a health survey and we take their temperature every single day. All staff are required to wear masks and in some cases they are wearing additional face shields. You may see rubber gloves being worn when we are handling materials. And we've also installed cashier style plexiglass shields at our customer service points. And as I said earlier, hand sanitizer and tissues are available throughout all buildings. And we regularly encourage all frequent hand washing. Now, let me just tell you that there certainly has been some impacts of the pandemic to the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. But I want to tell you also some good things that have gone on, including the fact that throughout Erie County, we have over 389,000 individuals with library cards. And during the pandemic, given that we were closed, we created a new library card, something called an e-library card. And since March of this year, when we closed, over 3,300 people have obtained e-library cards. So that is added to the number of people who are using our services. Our statistics certainly have been impacted, but people have recognized and are using us in different ways. Our circulation through August, not a small number, over 2,900,000 uh, items have been borrowed. Those are physical items as well as electronic items. Again, we were closed between March 16th and early June. We've experienced a 36.6% increase in ebook usage. That's our downloadable books and over a 28% increase in e-audios. Now during our closures, we spent an inordinate amount of time, our staff working from home was still building our library materials collections. In particular, they were building these e-collections because the use kept growing and we recognized that people still needed library services. Since we've reopened, which began again in early June and was staggered in a different libraries at different libraries throughout our system, we've seen a steady increase in circulation and foot traffic. In fact, both have doubled since June. While we're not at our pre-COVID-19 numbers, we're excited to be seeing more folks coming into our libraries. Oh, again, there are things that have been impacted, including our programming. Many of our staff have been working from home during our closures, and all of our programming went viral. A viral program is exciting and popular and a new model for us here at the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. One that we ramped up extremely quickly during our closures. In fact, by the end of March, we started to see an enormous amount of variety of programming going on. And this was all being done to meet the needs of our constituents. And we're proud to add now the Imagine Lecture Series, uh, which has now kicked off their virtual program. So thank you, Dennis, for, for being willing to give this all a, a new try. Now, virtual programming ranged in topics, including reading of children's books, story times, crafts, demonstrations, hosting health and wellness panel discussions, teaching genealogy, providing technology training, and even holding an online virtual job fair. Now, during the month of August, or excuse me, through March through August, our virtual programming has seen over 254,000 views. That's a significant amount of views to our virtual programming, which makes us very proud of what we have been able to do and who we have been able to reach. But we've also, now that we are open, 
and have restricted on site uh, programming, and that is because of the executive orders that are outstanding about gathering, about social distancing, uh, about all kinds of different uh, reasons that we can't do this on-site programming. We have created something called Make and Takes, and we have been doing some outdoor programming. So through August, now this is June, uh, you know, from the beginning of the year through June and August, over 61,000 people have been participating in these programmings that you can actually come in, grab a bag, take it home for hours and hours of family fun. So we've been reinventing ourselves. Now computers and Wi-Fi. So we have most certainly had an impact. We've had to shut down about 50% of our computers. Many of our libraries do, however, have laptops that they are using. We've employed social distancing, and our computer keyboards and the area of the computers are cleaned and disinfectant after each and every use. And that's very important because that lends to the health and safety of both our patrons and our staff. Now reservations to use our computers are, are not required, but we recommend them because we do have about 50% of public access, access computers available. And again, we do have laptops in many locations. Now our Wi-Fi use has always remained on. We never shut that off during our closures. And you might be saying, well, why wouldn't you shut that off during, your, during closures? Well, we recognize that people need to have internet access. And our Wi-Fi access goes beyond the walls of the library. So you can come into our parking lots, you can come onto our patios, you can come onto the ramp here at the Central Library, and you will have access to our high speed free Wi-Fi. And so we have seen some people using this Wi-Fi. In fact, our numbers are quite good during our closures. And we have seen particularly students coming before the library is open, after the library closes. And when we were closed during the, uh, during the mainstay of the pandemic, we had young people sitting outside doing their homework. So we're very excited to know that our Wi-Fi is being used and we are always exploring ways to advance those services. Now I'd like to share just a few minutes of some good news for you. Many, after many years of planning, I'm pleased to announce that we will have soon have a ribbon cutting and the official opening of something called the Rotary Reads Kids Club. Now these are very special spaces that we have been able to employ at the Leroy R. Coles Branch Library, our Dudley Branch Library, our Frankie Merriweather Jr. Branch Library, and the Isaias Gonzalez Soto Branch Library. And these spaces will include kid-friendly furniture. You're looking at one of the custom-made boats for this. All of this was sponsored by the Buffalo Rotary Club. Each library also has a colorful appeal, comfort, ease of maintenance, along with inviting shelving for easy book selection in warm and welcoming colors, all themed nautically for the, for the reflection of the Rotary Club. There are at all of the, all the remaining Buffalo Branch libraries, Crane, East Clinton, North Park, and Canty also have colorful cl kids club banners and a collection of, um, excuse me, and collection wayfinding signage. These have really brought a bright, warm, and welcoming atmosphere to each of the kids' areas in our Buffalo Branch Libraries. And I want to personally thank our friends at Buffalo Rotaries for this. And the reason for doing this is very quite simple. Libraries continue to play a significant role in education and development to our youngest citizens. So we are very pleased that together with the Buffalo Rotary, we will we'll be providing these beautiful new spaces and look forward to a time when we can hold in-person, on-site story times and other youth activities. And my understanding is our friends at Buffalo Rotary are interested in sharing their stories as well. Something else that was being prepared during our closure is B is for book. Now this is a very exciting new large scale exhibit now open at the downtown central library. 
The exhibit is a visually stunning overview of over 400 years of publishing for children's books. It is a feast of beautiful illustrations and remarkable publications. B is for Books, Children's Stories Throughout the Centuries is free and now open to the public during all open hours at the Downtown Central Library. Those hours have changed and I can share with you those new hours at the end. From the Brothers Grimm to Alice in Wonderland, Dr. Seuss and Charlotte's Web, many of us will fondly remember the books that are on exhibit that we were first introduced to as young children and which we in turn may have shared with our own children later on. What you're looking at is just some quick pictures, some little temptations to hopefully come, have you come in to look at this beautiful exhibit. So we hope you will join us and visit this fantastically whimsical exhibit. And we ask that you just follow our friend Harold, who you'll see on the left hand side, and his wonderful purple crayon all throughout the library, leading you directly to the gallery exhibit space on the second floor. Now our services are very important. What we plan and how we plan is something that we ask for your help. And so as always, we have lots of things going on, traditional and new. And so I've given you just some very quick things because we wanted to leave time for some questions. But as we plan for future endeavors and services, we still want to hear from our community. So on your screens, you will see a link to uh, a survey that we now have open. It will run through October 1st, and we encourage you to complete the survey. We hope that you'll tell your friends, your neighbors, anyone to also complete, because this will help us in planning our future. It's not very long, so please do and take it. And before I finish, I must give a public service announcement. Census 2020, it will soon be coming to an end. And it's very important that each and every one of us complete our 2020 census. If you don't know, the results of this 2020 census will inform decisions about allocating billions of dollars, federal dollars, to communities across the country for hospitals, fires, departments, school lunch programs, library grants, and other critical programs and services, such as roads and other. Census counts also determine congressional representation. So please, I beg of you, for the betterment of Erie County, take a moment, if you have not already done so, and please complete your census. And with that, I've gone through this very, very quickly, and I apologize for my haste, but time is limited as we know. I'd gladly open up for any questions. If anyone has any questions of current library services, future library services, or things that we have been doing um, throughout the pandemic, please feel free, open your microphone and ask away. Or you can put it in the chat box. I guess we could use the chat box as well. Thank you, Mary Jean. Sure. Now it is time for questions and answers. Uh, uh, again, to reiterate, uh, type them into the chat box. That way we'll see them. Uh, if you're able to do that, uh, you'll see it takes a while if you haven't done it before, but you'll find your way there. Uh, Eugene, I have a, a, an overview question. Uh, first of all, I'm glad to hear about this new exhibit, B for Books. Uh, I haven't seen it. I'm going to make a, a point to do so. I've heard it's outstanding. Do you still have the slavery uh, exhibit that was uh, up um, <laughs> from last year uh, and, and very uh, timely as it's turned out, given the con conversations that both Buffalo and communities across our country are having uh, uh, about the current times? Uh, is that still up? Yes, most definitely it is. It is also open all of the hours that the Central Library is open. And for those of you who don't know, the Central Library is now open Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. And on Fridays and Saturdays from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. The slavery exhibit is open. It is timely, Dennis. You couldn't be more correct on that. We have left that exhibit open 
mostly because we have had so many interests from schools um, to direct the direct their students to it. Um, it was a it is a community based uh, exhibit. Many members of the community did participate in the creation thereof. It is uh, something uh, that is very in depth about slavery uh, and the uh, the harshness of of slavery um, in our history. Uh, as a nation, as well as locally, I think it's very important, and I hope people will come and see that exhibit. And and for those that physically can't send a classroom over, uh, uh, public tours uh, uh, for all the uh, public entities, the cultural entities, uh, are not going on in 2020 through 2021, for Buffalo Public Schools anyways. Uh, th there is a 3D virtual reality uh, on your website uh, that people can at least use it in the classrooms uh, if they choose to do so. Yes, it's one of several uh, exhibits that we do have digitally on our website. And our website, I'll remind people, is www.buffalolib.org. Uh, and if you go right to the search box and you type digital exhibits, you'll find them quite easily. All right. I've, uh, I can't quite get back in here, so I'm going to try this. <laughs> there, okay. Uh, let's check our chat box here and see what we've got. No, nothing going on there. All right. Uh, Mayor Jean, librarians, we have a, a University of Buffalo. It has a graduate program uh, for librarians. How does the library encourage young people to think about a career, a professional career, uh, as a library librarian or in the library system? Absolutely. So we encourage you know anyone to explore a wonderful field of librarianship, as well as many other uh, types of job or uh, jobs that we do have or positions that we do have here at the uh, at, throughout our libraries. Um, you know, it runs the gamut. I think the best the thing that I could tell anyone uh, who is interested in working at a library is that you have to be flexible. Uh, today's library world is a constant of change. You have to be flexible enough to jump in, uh, to make those changes as, as necessary, uh, to remain relevant to our communities. Um, and also to uh, promote the different programs and activities that we have um, made available and also be creative in creating those, um, those activities about libraries. So I encourage anyone to explore this wonderful field called librarianship or other careers uh, that are, are within the libraries. And it runs the gamut, anything from security uh, through technology uh, to uh, cataloging to uh, positions for persons to shelve materials to teach classes you know we really are um, very multi-leveled and very uh, multi-service based and so working for a library is it's it's beyond librarians we love our librarians and we encourage people to look into that career field the University of Buffalo has a great program we work regularly with them on recruitment you know, and I always like to remind people uh, as well, the, the, the richness of the library system, uh, as I recall, it's right around the 1860s. Uh, uh, most of our culturals kind of flow from uh, that uh, original library system. And now you've got, and maybe give us a quick uh, overview, the, the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library system that you're the director of uh, numbers of libraries uh, sure. uh, just the overview that that this system we we know the downtown library but there's so much more J just a quick overview <laughs> well a quick is 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 relative <laughs> and it's well, a layered but, overview but, I appreciate but I can it. tell you most certainly um the buffalo in uh, nary county public library system is a very complex organization we are made up of 23 independent organizations that do operate 37 locations and a library on wheels. Many people don't realize we also have libraries in prison uh, in, in 
County uh, Correctional Facility as well as uh, the, uh, the Erie County Jail. Um, and we also service um, three additional state correctional facilities. Um, so we are very complex, as I said, uh, 23 independent organizations, um, each with its own board of trustees. And then there is an overarching board of trustees for the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library System who wears two hats. They also oversee the Buffalo libraries, the Buffalo branches, eight branches, as well as the downtown central library. Wow. And uh, my guess is given the, the awareness of the, just what we're doing, the Zoom programs, digital programs, uh, so many people were suddenly be, had to become homeschool teachers uh, <laughs> and, and the role of the library in assisting uh, literally K through 12 and well beyond uh, is immense. And, and I can only imagine the community rediscovering that if they forgot that because it's most important for the times. Agree? Well, we like to, uh, absolutely agreed. We like to call ourselves an extension of the classroom. We do regularly work with local school districts uh, and we most certainly, given, given the times uh, these days, we know that the school districts have been very challenged uh, with how they've been having to uh, present, uh, you know, how they teach and are they home, are they remote, is it, is it sort of a, a combination of those two things and we're here to help. And so we cannot stress that enough. We are here to help um, and we are, have, our, uh, our collections are accessible. Um, you just need a Buffalo and Erie County Public Library card. Um, parents can apply for a library card. Adults can apply for a library card online. Teens aged three, uh, 13 to 17 can get uh, an access card that allows them access to our electronic resources. They don't need parental permission, but we have so many electronic resources that can help with their schooling and beyond. And we are working uh, to find a way to have uh, children age 12 and under with parental permission also obtain uh, an online uh, library card or a library card that has full privileges so that they can use those online resources. Again, is that extension of the classroom. Great, well, we said we would uh have this program till roughly one o'clock and uh, it's roughly one o'clock. So uh, uh, folks, we, uh, we thank you for joining us today. Uh, we so appreciate this new format uh, hosted again by the, uh, uh, whoops, there we go. Well, it's been hosted by the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Uh, next week, uh, we'll be back for a, um, uh, another Tuesday noon hour episode uh, put on by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature. Uh, it'll be uh, the fifth Tuesday actually, and it'll deal with the art of investing and the CEO of Rand Capital will be our, uh, our featured speaker. So uh, with that, uh, I wish, everyone a good day and good health.